Welcome to this 10 minute lightning talk entitled Coding a Graph Application from Scratch with Grandstack, presented by Christian Miles. You can start, Christian. Thanks, Elaine. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining my session. Let me just share my screen. Um, it's really great to be part of this excellent conference today. Um, hopefully, you've been enjoying the uh, the uh, talk so far. Uh, I'm going to be talking again about Grandstack. You may have seen some earlier. Your screen sharing has been disconnected. Oh, can you still see my screen? I was told it was disconnected. It's OK. We can see it now. Can you see it now? Yes, we can see it. Great. I won't go full screen again, just in case it doesn't um, let you see it. Sorry about that. Yeah. So um, yes, I'm going to be talking about the Grand Stack today uh, and talk about uh, writing applications from scratch using the stack. Uh, my name is Christian Miles. Uh, I'm calling from um, uh, near Vancouver in British Columbia, Canada. So it's nice to be part of this uh, global conference today. So I'll be starting off by talking through what Grand Stack is. Uh, I'll touch upon uh, why you might want to use it. Uh, and then I'll walk through how you would build an app from, from scratch using Grandstack. So Grandstack is one of those nice little acronyms that um, refers to a number of technologies that work well together. Uh, it doesn't take too much to spot that there is G-R-A-N-D here. Um, and the first up, we have uh, GraphQL. Uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with GraphQL, it's a real uh, modern equivalent or modern replacement or um, alternative to, to REST APIs. So really, it's a query language for APIs. And it's combined with a server runtime for executing those, those queries. Um, there's a lot of great benefits to GraphQL over, over REST. Um, and a lot of people are finding these benefits uh, in, in production environments. Um, I think the biggest benefit potentially is the um, uh, strongly typed nature of the APIs that you can build with GraphQL. So what that means is you, you will always know what type of um, data you're returning from your queries, uh, because there's a, there's a schema that underpins the API uh, kind of baked into GraphQL. Um, also, another benefit is you can run nested queries. So you could say uh, get users as well as their posts in the same query. Whereas with REST, you'd have to build a whole API to um, uh, server it back end to, to work out exactly how to return that. Uh, meanwhile, GraphQL is very um, flexible for doing those sorts of queries. So just like um, GraphQL is a modern approach to, to um, APIs, uh, React is a modern approach, so that's the R in, um, in Grand. So React is a, is a modern approach to web development. It's really just a JavaScript library, but it really helps uh, web developers um, write uh, applications with things in mind like uh, state management, um, lifecycle updates in an application. It really cuts down the, the boilerplate code that you have to write again and again uh, and helps you be a bit more consistent in how you write applications. Now, Apollo for A. Uh, Apollo is a, it's, um, I, I think of it as the glue for GraphQL and, and React. Although that does a little bit of disservice because, of, because of course, um, Apollo, uh, there's a lot of other te technologies that are supported by, by, by Apollo and the, the great uh, tooling that they have. Um, but I'll be showing you some of that tooling today, whether it's the client side, the server side, or even the, um, the nice little playground ID that I'll be showing you in a second. And then finally, Neo4j. I, I don't think I need to explain what Neo4j is. After all, you are, are at a conference for uh, Neo4j. Um, but really, for the grand stack, it really sits at the bottom level. It's very much a um, some uh, like a storage layer, of course, uh, and you get all the good stuff that you'd expect from Neo uh, from the index-free adjacency. Um, so it's, it's it's really really nice. Now, um, the other reason I'm here today is that uh, I work for a company called Cambridge Intelligence, and we have a product called Regraph. Now, Regraph is a graph visualization library for React developers. Uh, and that, of course, means that it fits very nicely inside of the, the grand stack. So that's what I'll be showing you today. Um, the other benefit to Regraph is that you don't need to change the acronym. It's all, it's all there. So uh, it's nice that you can just slot in there like that. So here's, a, here's my basic application architecture. I just drew up this diagram to give you an idea of the, before I show you the code. Uh, I'll start on the top right. This is my sort of server side component. Uh, we have the Node.js logo here. So it's always nice to use the same programming language for the front end and the back end. Um, we have uh, Apollo here. You'll see that I'm using the, the Apollo server to, to uh, host what is my GraphQL API. Um, down here, this is my client. So this is talking to the to the API. So it's a query is sent and the, the JSON is, is, is in the response. Um, and I have regraph in my application along with the client side, uh, Apollo client, as well as the as React in, in my front end. And then finally, uh, the API itself talks to Neo4j here in the top left. Uh, really behind the scenes, this is using Cypher. Uh, but it's using also using the Vault uh, driver as well to get a nice, efficient connection connection to the database. But one thing to note here is that the um, 
connection here, you know, you, there's no need to be writing any serve uh, any any cipher in your in your front end or even on the server side here. You can just leverage a, a schema that you derive from your your Neo4j database. So um, when I talk about building an application from scratch, uh, it's maybe a little ambitious to try and do that in what is now five minutes left on my talk. Um, so what I have done is I, I've given you an idea of the, the, the functions, you, you, uh, your, the commands you would run in your command line uh, to really set up your environments. And there'll be a blog post to follow with these details, so don't worry about writing this all down. Um, but, but I didn't think it was worthwhile you watching me just install dependencies. So um, this on the left here is an example of the sort of visualization we'll get as a result of, of building our API and our front end. Uh, and then at the top here, I have my client side. This is what I did to start things off. So I use uh, Facebook's Create React app, a great tool for starting out with um, React development. Uh, and then uh, added up our um, uh, visualization library, regraph to my environment. And then I also in install some great um, uh, plugins and, and toolings from, uh, from Apollo. Apollo Boost is, is a zero configuration way to uh, have your client side um, code. Uh, also, at the end here, I have um, a GraphQL where uh, this is actually the, the language definitions. And then finally, for this slide, we have a server. Really, really simple. All I do is create a directory. I initialize it with Yarn, my uh, sort of package manager of choice. Uh, and then I add my dependencies. Uh, and I'll talk about .end in a minute, but it's not necessary, but it's, it's good practice. So let me jump to my uh, code here. First up, uh, on the left-hand side, I have my server. Um, I Again, I'm not going to just type this all out, so here it is for you. Very, very simple. It's just 22 lines. Uh, we instantiate our driver, for example. We, we create our server. Uh, and this is where the, the, the main bulk of the actual work happens. Um, I want to point out two things. Firstly, I'm using a .n file so I can get my um, credentials from my database from disk rather than having it in the runtime code. Um, here, I'm actually pointing to a, a nice little um, Neo4j instance that, that Will put up last night of the um, all the talks from today, actually. So then on my server, I use a really cool function that comes with uh, Neo4j's GraphQL uh, JS, uh, and that is infer schema. So there's no need to handwrite your, your schema. Uh, what you can do is you can actually infer that directly from, from your Neo4j database, which is really nice. So this is my code from my server. So let's, let's give it a whirl. So I'll just use Node on my server side. So it will take a few minutes to initialize with that schema. Uh, and just as a side note, you know this is typically used to prevent having to write any schema uh, to start off with, and then you would uh, amend it and change it. Um, but I actually find it works quite nicely just to run it directly and just always just to write your schema, at least for prototypes. So now that's running, let me check the actual server that's been run. And this is what I have here. So this is actually the playground that has now been deployed as part of that little server. And even if you've never written a line of, of uh, GraphQL in your life, this is really, really nice because it allows me to uh, actually learn more about the um, API just by looking at these like uh, type hints here. So um, here I'm searching for speakers, and I'm getting back uh, the companies that they work for. So I'll give that a play here. And this is the JSON that I get back as a response. So that's great. So that's the server side, and I can also use this as my endpoint for my application. So let's go back to my code. Here is my really, really basic application here. Um, I've used, I've just amended the Create React app output and I've installed a regraph into, into the application here. I've defined really basic items here, which are just my nodes and my link, a single link. And then I have this nice declarative uh, component here for my chart that I want to render. So again, if I um, uh, start this little application now, it's gonna load up that, that tab with uh, this, this application. Uh, and this is, uh, it was loaded from earlier. But starting again, here is that, that simple, simple, really, really basic app. So I just have those two links. And this is actually our first look at, at Regraph today in my application. Uh, for my application, I've just chosen to just have a, a, a single chart right now. But uh, you know, an extension for this would be to add things like sidebars and, and, and tooltips and, and things like that. So now I have my static chart. Let me jump back to my code. And what I want to do is I actually want to um, talk to the, the endpoint. So I have some code here that I'll just uncomment. Um, you probably noticed earlier, I saw that there was a mention of React hooks. Here I'm using a, a hook called useQuery, which is a really nice way to talk to that endpoint. Uh, here's my uh, GraphQL query that I've just uh, written here. And then in my code, instead of having these hard-coded items, what I'll do is I'll just um, get those from that, that hook that I've uh, in, in, in installed there. So now that's been updated. You see the query has actually been run on the back end. And then this is my application in the front end. So this is great. This is actually all the tags for the different talks, as well as the talks themselves, as well as the people who are um, delivering those talks as well. So this is really sort of end to end. I've got the back end, I've got the front end. Uh, I'm starting to visualize the data there. That isn't that obvious from looking at the tables or, or from doing ad hoc queries against the text. 
Um, so yeah, this is a this is a nice little application, and I think if if you sat me down, I would be able to write this in in ten minutes, and you'd have something like this up on your screen, which is really really powerful. And it's it's a real benefit of of the grand stack. So let me jump back to my slides here. Um, I have a couple of questions here that you might want to answer on the, the Hunger Games, um, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions you might have about what I've shown you today, or if you have any questions about uh, WeGraph itself, and my email address is at the bottom of the screen there. Thanks so much for your time. Did you see the questions? No, I didn't. Where you can where can we find the blog? Uh, it's yet to be released, but um, if you keep an eye out on our um, Twitter account or online, uh, it should be released in the next few weeks. Um, but yeah, all the code is will be available, so you can follow along with what I did today. Okay. Just give another minute for people to answer their Hunger Games questions. Okay. Great. Thank you, Christian, very much for presenting to us today. Thanks, Elaine. Okay. Bye now.